a collection of Stuart engines and some other nice things. This is part 14, an idea for a temporary method to fit a Stuart displacement lubricator on the steam inlet piping. Fitting silicone o-rings to the crossheads, which prevents sideways movement of the connecting rods, and also to hold the crosshead pins in place. The engine is now starting to run very smoothly. I must stress that this is a temporary method of mounting a displacement lubricator. I removed the inlet piping from the engine and unscrewed both of them from the T-piece, including the steam tap. Then I fitted the T-piece in the lathe chuck and I centre drilled it, followed by drilling through 7 seconds of an inch. Then I used the tap to thread the hole quarter of an inch by 32 threads per inch. It works, but the only problem is, to my eye, it doesn't look good. I'm going to make a special cross piece and that episode will be included in the Model Engineering for Beginners series. These are the four crosshead blocks, the two pins that go through the blocks and hold everything together, and four silicone o-rings. I very carefully drilled a shallow depression down the end of each one of these, just big enough to take an o-ring. This image explains it much better. There are now four hard-wearing silicone o-rings in the inside part of the crosshead blocks. And in this clip, I'm starting the assembly process. First of all, I push the crosshead pin through, then I fit the O-ring, followed by fitting the connecting rod. Then I fit the crosshead block at the other side and slide that into position before pushing the pin all the way through, through the hole in the block on the end of the piston rod, and finally through the crosshead block at the other side. Here's a different angle where you can actually see me doing the job clearly. Generally speaking, steam engines are hard bearing devices. They seldom use any kind of shock absorption. And one problem with many steam engines is sideways rattle. In this part of the clip, I'm very gently tapping the pin into position. These O-rings, apart from preventing sideways rattle on the crosshead, squeeze the crosshead pin and stop it coming loose. One down, one to go. This is the other crosshead. And as you can see, it's more fiddly than you think. Everything needs to align to allow the pin to go all the way through. And the hammer blows are really gentle. I could probably push the pin in just with my thumb, but I thought I would use a hammer to illustrate the point. Once both of the crosshead assemblies were back in place, I thoroughly oiled every moving part. Have you noticed the new oil cups on the main bearings? I've had these for a while and never used them and I really do think they look good, they're a vast improvement on the other type. If I remember rightly, I bought these glass oilers from microcosm-engine.com. The good thing about them is you just unscrew the top slightly and oil them through the screws that would normally just be needle valves. Time for a compressed air test and have a listen. Despite my efforts, one of the crosshead pins is working loose again. I used a small amount of thread lock on it and that fixed it. This engine is not fully run in, it's still quite stiff, but the side play on the crosshead is non-existent. And I haven't finished here, I'm going to machine a very small amount off the crosshead guide spacers, because as you can see, there is still some up and down play there. I'm going to remove the valve gear mechanism and remove the tiny grub screws and refit them with 7BA bolts. And it's at this time that they will shorten the spaces between the crosshead guides. What I'm aiming to do is make this engine run as quietly and smoothly as possible. In the spring, I'm going to have a sale. I have far too many engines, so I'm going to have a big sale via my website. And Patreon supporters will get the usual 10% discount on the prices. My workbench is a soundboard and this is intentional. And normally the engine sits on the workbench and I can hear every little noise that it makes. But for this final clip, 
I've sat the entire engine's baseboard on a piece of bubble wrap, so any mechanical noises will not be amplified. After a minor tweak to the timing and re-oiling all of the moving parts, this is what the engine now sounds like. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.